if we were to differentiate this equation as it is, it is going to be pretty tedious, but we are equipped with implicit differentiation and we have years of experience in algebra. And these two lead us to want to do a bit of improvisation to this first before we start our process of differentiation. For example, we can square both sides. So this is going to be equal to e to the power of x cosine x. And I believe that this is going to be easier for us to differentiate because on the left hand side, applying the implicit differentiation, we have this. And on the right hand side, applying the product rule, it is going to be e to the power of x cosine x. Differentiating this, this one let it remain constant. Then plus e to the power of x, differentiating cosine x gives us minus sine x. And should we leave e to the power of cosine x, cosine x as it is? e to the power, sorry, e to the power of x cosine x. Should we leave this as, as it is? We should not. Why? Because if you are to look at what you are supposed to show, there is no e to the power of x, there is no cosine x, which means that as much as possible, if we can replace any of the e to the power of x cosine x by y, we should try to do that and it is convenient here. So this here, I'm going to try to replace. This, too bad, you know, I don't think we can do much about it. I'm going to leave it as it is first. So e to the power of x, minus sine x, it will be minus this. So let me erase this. So we have e to the power of x sine x. So on the left hand side here, we have this. So we have a differential equation with the first order because we have dy dx. And what the question wants us to show is a differential equation of the second order. So we need a d square y dx square. Let's try to differentiate this one more time. We will get a d square y dx square. So differentiating this again, Product rule to this, differentiating y gives us dy dx. And this, I'll let it remain. So it is going to be another dy dx. And it will be 2y. Differentiating this, it is going to be d square y dx square. Is equal to applying the implicit differentiation, we have a 2y. Then dy dx is going to be minusing off this, which if I were to differentiate this, we're going to apply another product rule. So minus differentiating e to the power of x is still e to the power of x, then sine x, then minus e to the power of x differentiating sine x gives me a cosine x. So we have a 2, this times this, it is dy dx squared. And this is assuring cos, we are expecting a dy dx squared. Then this over here, it is going to be plus 2y d square y dx square again this is also assuring because we are seeing a y d square y dx square which appears here let's try to simplify this as much as possible i'm going to leave this as it is first by what we have done here we are going to try to remove this e to the power of x sine x and we know negative e to the power of x sine x which is here is equal to 2y dy dx minus y square so i'm going to replace this by plus 2y dy dx minus y square okay because minus e to the power of x sine x is equal to 2y dy dx minus y square as for this i'm going to do the same replacement so minus y square and we have a 2 then this is dy dx square then plus 2y d square y dx square is equal to this plus this is 4 y dy dx and we have uh, this this it will be minus 2 y square and now we can divide the entire equation by 2 i'll do that so we have this which is the same as this now then plus y d square y dx square which is the same as the second term here and this is going to become 2y dy dx. It is the same as the right hand side. And finally, this is minus y square. And this is what the question wants us to show. We have an equation for y. We have another one for dy dx. And one more for d square y dx square, which was what we have shown in the previous part. But in order for us to generate uh, an expansion for this Maclaurin's for y all the way up to x to the power of 3, we will still need one more equation and that is the equation for d cubed y dx cubed. So let's take this and we will differentiate this with respect to x. So differentiating this, it is going to be 2 d 
dy dx to the power of 1, chain rule, d square y dx square, plus product rule to this, differentiating y is going to give me dy dx, then d square y dx square, plus y, differentiating d square y dx square, and here we have it d cubed y dx cubed. This is equal to, again, product rule to this, to differentiating y, dy dx, multiply by another dy dx. So we have this, then plus 2y, differentiating this, this is d square y dx square, minus differentiating this, implicit differentiation 2y, dy dx. The only simplification that I can see here is actually just to multiply this with this. So I'm going to just rewrite this as dy dx times dy dx, which is dy dx squared. So this gives us an equation for d cubed y dx cubed. And now we are ready to find parts of the coefficient for the expansion all the way until x to the power of 3. And to do that, we will go for x to be equal to 0. We will want to find what is y. And y is going to be equal to square root of e to the power of 0, which is 1 cosine 0, which is also 1, so y is 1 when x is equal to 0. As for dy dx, dy dx is going to be y square, which is going to be 1 square minus e to the power of 0, sine x, which is 0, so this is going to become 0, divided by 2y, y is 1, so this is equal to 1 over 2 and d square y dx square. Making d square y dx square the subject, it is going to be 2y, 1, times dy dx, half, minus y square, minus away, half square, divided by y. So divided by 1. And this is equal to minus 1 quarter. And finally, d cubed y dx cube. Making, making this the subject, it is going to be equal to 2 dy dx square. So 2 half square plus 2y d square y dx square is minus 1 quarter minus 2y dy dx is half. So this is the three terms on the right hand side and I'll minus away this term and this term. So minus away 2 of dy dx is half. Then d square y dx square is minus 1 quarter, then minus away this term. So minus away dy dx is another half, then d square y dx square, it is minus 1 quarter. So this, and I'm going to divide this by y. So divide it by 1. And this is equal to minus 5 over 8, which means that y is going to be equal to, this is f0, so if I were to apply the formula, it is going to be f0, which is 1, plus f prime 0, it is this. So it is going to be half of x. Then plus f prime prime 0 is one, negative 1 quarter. So negative 1 quarter divided by 2 factorial x squared plus f prime 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 0, which is minus 5 over 8. This divided by 3 factorial x to the power of 3, and it is an infinite polynomial, so I'm going to use this dollar dot to represent that. So my final answer here for the expansion all the way up to x to the power of 3 is going to be 1 plus x over 2 minus x squared over 8 minus away 5x cubed over 48 plus dollar dot. And in part 3, we are going to try to get this, but instead of doing all the multiple differentiation, we are going to try to make use of formulas that we have in our formula sheet. So for y, which is equal to square root of e to the power of x cosine x, I am going to rewrite this as e to the power of x over 2, then a cosine x to the power of half. And the reason is because e to the power of x over 2 can be expanded by making use of this from my formula sheet. And then cosine x, I also have a version of it in my formula sheet. So for e to the power of x over 2, I'm going to replace all this x over here by x over 2. And that is going to be 1 plus x, which is going to be replaced by x over 2. It will be this, plus 
1 over 2 factorial x square it is going to be x over 2 square plus 1 over 3 factorial x to the power of 3 it is going to be replaced by x over 2 to the power of 3 and the next term is going to give us a x to the power of 4 and that is not of our concern because for what we are trying to verify here it is going to go all the way up to only x to the power of 3. Now let's look at cosine so for this cosine here, if I apply this, I will have a 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial. And the other term is going to be x to the power of 4, so I'm going to be neglecting it. So plus dot dot dot. So this to the power of half. So this is going to be equal to 1 plus x over 2 plus this is x squared over 8. Then this is going to be x to the power of 3 over 48 and so on so this will be the simplified version of the first term as for this we are going to make use of binomial expansion because this is this to the power of half and the power is not a positive integer so what if we were to try to move this in putting in a bracket then it will be plus minus this and i'm going to see this entire expression here as a second term which will then allow us to make use of the binomial expansion. So now this is going to be 1 plus the power, which is half. Then the second term, which is minus x squared over 2 factorial and so on. Then it is going to be another coefficient and this second term to the power of 2. If this is going to go to, to the power of 2, which means that the smallest power is going to be x to the power of 4. And again, that's not what we want. So I'm going to just put a plus dot dot dot. So this is equal to 1 plus x squared over 2. Sorry, x over 2, then x squared over 8, then x cubed over 48. And this is going to be 1 minus x squared over 4. Okay, we just need one more expansion and probably a bit of simplification. And let's see whether we can verify that it is this. So 1 times this gives me 1 minus x squared over 4. This times this plus x over 2 minus x cubed over 8. This times this plus x squared over 8. This times this is giving me an x to the power of 4. And that's not what I want, so I'm going to be neglecting it. Then after that, this times this gives us a plus x to the power of 3 over 48. And this, this is going to give us x to the power of 5, so I'm not going to put it in. And doing one last simplification to this, we will be getting a 1 plus x over 2 minus x squared over 8 and minus 5x cubed over 48. Okay, this is exactly what we were trying to verify. So we have completed this question and we have verified that this through the formula from our formula sheet is what we have proven in part two.